Have you thought about sex after baby? What thoughts and beliefs come up for you when you think about sex and motherhood, sex and parenthood? You're not alone if it's a subject that brings up a lot of feelings and emotions. I encourage you to find a quiet place, make sure you might need earbuds, grab a journal or something to take notes on and create the safety you need to go as deep as you feel safe going to today and return when you're ready to go deeper as today's episode is full of ideas and reflections for you to consider if you're pregnant, thinking of pregnancy, postpartum, and or parenting and want to create more fun, love, and intimacy in your life and your relationship. Hi, I'm Deborah Pascali Bonaro, founder and director of Orgasmic Birth and host of the Orgasmic Birth podcast. I remember when I first became a parent and wondered why there is no preparation for parenting that includes all of the changes that you experience in your body, your relationship, and sexuality. I couldn't find any book that honored this aspect of such a major life transformation as parenting. There was nothing out there that celebrated mothers and all birthing people and our new and changing bodies. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you'll follow us on Instagram at Orgasmic Birth and tag us with your thoughts about today. Invite your friends. So you know what to expect. And if you're in a public space, I already said, or have children nearby, you might, might want to use earbuds because I'm going to talk about how your birth story affects your sexuality, daily pleasures to change your life, and how to ignite your senses with pleasure, unlocking your wild, sexy woman. And I even have some surprises for you too. So don't miss that at the end. Are you ready to prioritize your happiness and pleasure? That's not to say we don't all have challenges and especially in these times. Also, I want you to honor that for all women birthing, all birthing bodies take time to heal after birth and everyone heals and is ready for intimacy and sex at different times and in different ways. So always listen to your body, prioritize your safety and comfort. So just a reminder, even as we go through this presentation, remember just to take one minute breaks and breathe deeply, just three deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth can actually help reset your system if some of what we're talking about is maybe triggering or bringing you some things to think about. Also, find pleasure. Just pause and think about what can you do for a minute of pleasure. That will also reset your hormones and take you from stress to pleasure. There's a quote that I've always loved that like if you get up in the morning and you're feeling a little like maybe just not the best of days, maybe a little grumpy, maybe you have stress and things on your mind. But if you look in the mirror and you frown and you turn that frown upside down, this is the only thing I ever say you can fake. But if you do fake it till you make it, what will happen is just the act of frowning brings more of those stress and catecholamines into the body. When we just pretend and turn it upside down to a smile, we actually change the hormones and begin to create more feel-good hormones in your body. So really take time now if you feel things coming into you, pause, breathe, find out where is that coming from and find a moment of pleasure when you want to turn that frown upside down. So let's start digging in a little bit here. So I wrote the book, the ultimate guide to sex after a baby secrets to love and intimacy, because there's so much silence and unspoken shame about changes in bodies and lives that every new mother and birth parent experiences. The world goes on, but you're forever changed. And until now, there were no guides to enhance your relationship and sexuality, which are the foundations for parenting from a place of love and wholeness. So I wrote The Ultimate Guide to Sex After Baby, Secrets to Love and Intimacy to fill the gaps for parents, to share real stories 
to honor that wherever you are in navigating sex after baby, there are many others who feel the same. So Kathy Dobb, a colleague of mine and founder of BirthWorks International wrote to me that even best friends rarely discuss their sex lives after birth with each other. Instead, they suffer privately, feeling misery instead of joy and marriages and relationships often begin to fall apart. This book shows how following the acronym PLEASURES can help any new parent turn the negative into positive during this significant transition in life and along the way, enabling you as the reader to feel uplifted no matter what stage of life you're in. So as Kathy wrote this, I had to say, yes, yes. That's why I wrote the book, right? I remember many years ago as a new mom, I assumed everybody else in my mother's group was having great sex. We didn't talk about it. And it was only years later when I finally broke the subject, everybody talked like, why didn't we share? We could have supported each other. And there's such a wide range of how people feel. So I'd like to ask you the question, do you discuss sexuality and pleasure with your friends? Uh, I'd love to hear that answer. So you deserve to celebrate that being a mother, you're also a sexy wild woman and all of those aspects exist together. So using the acronym PLEASURES, P-L-E-A-S-U-R-E-S, -E -E so with the plural, pleasures. I'm gonna guide you right now with my nine steps that I've gathered from my work around the world, listening to new parents, learning from sexuality educators, and gathering stories of how parents expand their sexuality and birth themselves with love and acceptance. Because sadly, two opposite too often the opposite happens when birth strips away their dignity and sense of self and leaves people feeling less sexy, less desirable to themselves and to others. So you deserve to be and feel loved. Dr. Amanda Noel, I was blessed to support both during their birth as a birth coach to help them to have an orgasmic birth and in her parenting journey. And she said, so many people feel alone in the process of reawakening healthy sexuality after baby. I was one of these women. After our girl was born, I noticed that I lost my sex drive altogether, and I didn't see it coming back anytime soon on its own. This book and Deborah changed my life because it's given me permission to have patience and to understand that it's completely normal to need to do some work after birth. I'm taking the time doing the work to rebirth my own post baby sexual energy. Thanks to Deborah's encouragement, I'm now practicing a self pleasure practice, which is keeping hubby enticed and he be even doing his own too. I feel my body recovering and rebuilding, and our spark is coming back day by day. So, one of the things I often guide people and Take, take a moment now and imagine that there's a scale of one to 10. One is kind of the lowest. 10 is like, yes, I'm doing it. It's high and you're extremely satisfied. The question is, how satisfied are you today with your sexuality? So really kind of ponder for a minute and what's the first number that popped into your mind? And know that when I ask this question and I have a class called Sex After Baby where I invite just a small group of people to journey with me live for nine weeks and we dig deep into all these topics and we create safe space where people get to share and heal and expand, a lot of times people will have less than five. Um, so if you're in that, you know, five or less, no, that's many times where people are, especially if they've had a baby in the last several months or the first year. But I know that we can easily move that to a 10. And so my question to you is, whatever your number is, and I should say, if you're already an eight, nine or 10, yes, we'd love to hear from you. What are some of your secrets and tips? But know that what would it take to make it a 10? Most people, when you really are honest, where are you? 
And what would it take to be a 10? We'll already be able to start writing down some of your own tips for that journey. So a good question to return to time and time because that number changes as we go through those from early days to later in parenting and relationships. So my nine pleasures are the tools that are going to take you deeper. I hope to make everybody that tenor maybe even a 12, right? Um, to deepen your connection to your body, your sexuality, enhance your relationship. And that's all gonna impact how you show up as, as a parent. So I'm gonna present them to you in order, spelling the word pleasures now, but feel free, highlight the step that you wanna begin with. A lot of times people jump around. What is the step that you need most? So we start with P and my P in pleasure, is preparing your roadmap to more fun and sex. So on any good journey today, right? We've gotten so used to GPSs that we put in where we are and where we wanna go. And we plot that map, right? It's made so easy by technology, but we need to do that when we're looking at intimacy and fun and connection and sex in our relationship. And part of that is looking at what's behind us. What are our past beliefs? You know, where are we in this day so that we can really create that destination, that vision to a sexy future. So I'm going to just give you a few questions that I often guide people through and just write them down maybe for yourself or maybe later listen to this with your partner and each of you write your answers down and then share them or maybe with another friend that's also um, in that pregnancy or postpartum or parenting phase. So did you feel you had good sexual education growing up? I love to hear the answer on that because sadly for so many people, they received more fear education or maybe even miseducation than really good education about healthy, safe sexuality. What was your education about sexuality from your family? Um, did they talk about it? Sometimes silence talks more than words and can bring more shame or restrictions. But did your family educate you? What words describe how you feel about sexuality when you hear me say that word? How do you feel? What words come to mind? How do you define sexuality? Really important to write your own definition. There's plenty of definitions out there, <clears throat> but the most important one is yours. And vision what you desire for yourself and your relationship. What would making it a 10 look like? Where are you? And let's create your map to get to the destination that you want to be. Can you describe that vision of where you'd like to be in just a few words? Um, and how can you heal or expand that kind of roadmap, right, to more fun and sex? And I always put healing in there. We'll go deeper into that. But for many of us, this journey is actually a journey of healing, healing what we might have been handed down, healing a lack of education, in some cases, healing trauma, and then with knowledge, expanding and with that healing into new beginnings. So we must really look at kind of our old beliefs too and decide, are they serving you or do you need to help get rid of them? When you become a parent, it's really important to express those feelings and explore your expectations and beliefs about motherhood, parenthood, and sexuality, right? Too many new parents suffer from depression and isolation, sometimes a sense of loss of themselves and their relationship, and they give up on those dreams. So we really need to look, don't let those old beliefs or lack of knowledge take your pleasure away. I love to say, don't let anyone take your peace and pleasure away. My yoga teachers always say, don't anyone, don't let anyone take your peace away. And that's important daily wisdom. But I add to that your pleasure too, because you deserve to have more fun, better sex and more love. So the L in my pleasures, I consider it losing yourself. Um, often, especially as new parents, but parents anywhere along the way, 
you're always striving to be the best parent. And sometimes that can leave you out, leaves you far away from your personal goals and you get a little lost in the process. So this is all about finding that balance of energy with good parenting resources, parenting support, things that will help you create ease and also allow you to create time to care for yourself and your relationship. So if you already have some parenting resources, maybe a parenting circle or classes that support you, um, write them down. What are they? And if you haven't connected to them in a while, do know that there's a lot of online groups. The, the benefit that we've moved so virtual is there are a lot of parenting online resources, private groups that you can join for support. What words describe how you feel about being a parent? And that's a lot to think about. What are they? What are the first words that come to mind? And if you were to describe what parenting is to you, what would you say? How has the way you were parented impacted how you parent? There's a lot to unpack in here. And in our group, one of the things I love to guide people to create is a mothering or a parenting mission statement that honors you and how you show up as a parent. So if you're taking time to pause here and really write your words about parenting and time for nurturing yourself and expanding in here, you might want to take time to write what is your mother or your parenting mission statement. Really powerful. In our last group, we certainly had a lot of tears and this exercise and hearing each person's words were incredibly powerful. And we all realized how there isn't that kind of preparation and taking that pause to look at what's in the past, where we are and what we want to bring forward into our own parenting is such an important exercise. So the E in pleasures is endings are new beginnings. So that for me is what does your birth story hold? And, you know, a lot of people think about birth, oh, it's just a day. But if you've done any work with me preparing for birth or as a doula, you know, we'd spend a lot of time talking about my mentor, Penny Simpkin, who's written a lot that birth is a day you will never forget. And birth is going to impact how we feel about ourselves, our bodies, our self-esteem. And so it's not just another day. I say it holds the secrets to how you feel about yourself, your body, and your sexuality. And it's a life-changing event that really deserves time to reflect, process, and heal if needed before you can move deeper into other aspects and especially even deeper into better sex. So take time to share your birth story. Maybe this is to sit down and process with your doula, with your midwife to write the story and just reflect on it. But sharing your feelings about birth for yourself and with others that were a part of the process or even with friends that want to listen, can be a big part of healing if healing's needed. But it's also a part that no matter how birth was for you, you often found parts of yourself that you didn't know existed, right? I often say birth asks us to dig deeper into our well of strengths to bring our baby safely into our arms and into our life. And especially if birth took a different path than what you were envisioning, you might have dug even deeper. So really taking the time to process, to heal, and to incorporate all those strengths, the new things that you found in yourself can make such a difference. And if you did have any birth trauma, again, this is a time where healing is really needed through support. So some of you might still be pregnant, or maybe you're considering pregnancy. And I just want to back into you can listen to some of my other episodes. Have you really considered the sexuality of childbirth. And when we're processing our birth story, one thing I've learned is people that prepare with their sexuality, and I always say body, mind, spirit, sexuality. So if there was healing to do, they do that more in pregnancy or before, um, really expanding and learning new ways about birth for comfort and pleasure. People that have births that they describe as orgasmic, 
tend to have a higher rate of going beyond and not that they don't have challenges and there are still healing and things to go on postpartum, but they often can open up to a deeper sense of intimacy and better sex than even before. One person talked with me recently and said that, you know, in her sexual life, she had been a little reserved and kind of just feeling shy, but after having an orgasmic birth and those that have birth know that like birth will open you up to primal sounds and to move in ways that your body and your baby need to just listen in this deep intuitive way. And she said, after making sounds and moving and feeling wild and primal, she thought, I'm not going to be shy in sex anymore. If my partner saw me do that, I feel completely comfortable doing anything. And she said their sex life once she healed postpartum and was ready and she felt safe and prepared is off the charts now. So really taking the time to prepare, right? Understanding, and I love this quote from Karen Ehrlich, Understanding the sexuality of childbearing could drive changes in the treatment of laboring women that could lead to improving the health of our world. And I agree. I think there's so much more available in birth. So if you are pregnant, definitely listen to some of our other podcasts about orgasmic birth as well in preparing. And I really want to come back to healing. Some of you have maybe participated or really are aware of the Me Too movement, um, the number of people that have been abused sexually, emotionally, or physically um, in their life. And I think it's really important in pregnancy that we talk about that. One of my places to go is a great book called When Survivors Give Birth, and they're actually classes. You can attend work shops with trainers on this. When Survivors Give Birth was written by my two mentors, Penny Simpkin and Phyllis Klaus. And I think it's really an aspect that we need to talk about. I'm going to have more episodes coming forward where we will have some experts talking and guiding survivors through healing as preparation for birthing. And if you've watched our documentary, Orgasmic Birth, you know that Helen is a survivor of sexual abuse. I never would have uh, created a documentary that looks at the sexuality of labor and birth without including survivors. And Helen is an, a beautiful story, an example of when survivors can choose where and with whom they want to birth, when they feel respected and they have dignity and are honored, it can actually be one of the most healing moments in your life. Many survivors have told me and written to me that birthing their way was really a time of reclaiming their body and power. But sadly, we know in birth, we need a hashtag me to birth. We're knowing more and more from global surveys that too many people are not feeling safe, are not respected, are not honored in birth. And whether a survivor or not, some people are leaving birth feeling traumatized. So we need to both bring healing to all survivors prior to birth. And I'm doing a lot of work. And again, listen to other episodes. I often talk about how we need to co-create a healthy maternity care system that puts care bolded and front and center with respectful, safe, and equitable care for all. So let me keep going. I could go off different tangents, right? There's so much to share, but let's get back to the A in pleasures. And this is appreciate your new body. Whose body is this? I remember, you know, you have nine months of growing a baby. And I remember postpartum kind of looking down going, I don't know why I wasn't thinking that it was going to take still a long time for my body to recover from childbirth and feeling like whose body is this? Those new curves and new lines and some stretch marks. I was like, where did they come from? Left me a little bit longing for my old body. And that was a mistake because once you birth to babe, you have a new body all through life. Your body is always changing. And I think too 
often and sometimes with media pressure, people are always trying to get back to where they were and that's never going to fully happen. So that's like not a cause that's easy to do. But I always say we need to come to acceptance and then love this body that grew a human, that birthed a human, whatever way birth was. This is a body that we want to honor and love and unlock, unlock those inner treasures. Your body created and birthed new life and your body holds the secret to pleasure, healing and health. So, <coughs> excuse me. I love the band called The Misses, and they did a video several years back, but I really encourage you, if you have a moment, look on YouTube for The Misses and The Magic Mirror. So it's really a sad look and so true. This magic mirror asks women to rate themselves. It's not around pregnancy or birth. It's just in life. And so many of the women rate themselves less than, right? And the bottom half of where they could be. And then they did a surprise. They gathered friends and family and asked friends and family to record what they think of this person. So the things they've contributed, raised children, did finish a project, a degree, it's really touching that each person makes a difference in other people's lives. And when they played those recordings back, one, get a box of tissues, it's really heartwarming. And I think it's true of every person. You've done more and made a difference in more people's lives than you probably ever consider and think about. But now they ask them after listening to that to now move the dial on the mirror and now they could all step into being extraordinary. So really take a moment and like look in the mirror. What do you see? Who are you? How do you feel about yourself and your body? And what if you could see yourself through others' eyes, beauty inside and out? How would that change how you feel? And can you look in the mirror and say, I love you? The S in pleasures is sensuality. Ignite your senses. Feel your passion build and release all that doesn't serve you and create what you desire. So every sense is a path to pleasure. So think about what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste and touch. Where do you like touch? So stimulate all your senses, choose your favorite song, dance and express yourself. Release any emotional blocks. I often just say, shake off, right? And expand your bliss. Maybe twirl and swap, swirl and sing. You often have to feel it to heal it. So what sense is the most sensual for you? Uh, really think about what music, create a sensuality playlist and consider moving to it. So I love to go deeper into all the ways that we can bring our senses to intimacy, connection, love, and good sex. So the you is understanding sex begins between your ears. Communication with love. So often as a new parent, we're changing diapers, feeding and sleep can dominate all that we're doing and the conversation between us as new parents. So taking just small nuggets, which may be all you have to really listen and to be heard leads to better, more fulfilling sex. So make some time to listen to your partner, maybe listen together to this podcast and do some of these exercises so that both of you can be seen and heard both in your challenges and in your joys. Our rituals, daily pleasures to change your life. In the stress of life and parenting, it's easy to forget how simple pleasures that arise from daily rituals you choose to perform, such as writing. And in our class, we give you a pleasures journal and we guide you with prompts like I'm doing today. So really journaling and creating that space. Maybe it's brushing your hair for an extra minute each day can create happiness or having your partner do that for you. What are some things that change your frown to a smile? I love dancing, walking in nature, eating dark chocolate. So take a moment right now and write down 
three simple pleasures. When I say simple, these are one to three minute things. Um, ideally, I hope you'll have a list of 20 or 30 and every day you'll make sure you do three to five simple pleasures. And if they're a minute to three minutes, you certainly can do three one minutes at, even as a new parent in those first weeks that are so demanding. So I would say when you're ready, start writing down what your long pleasures are. And that might be intimacy. That might be great sex, right? Really think about that. And again, do you have some music that will help you with that? The next E in pleasures is energize your sexuality secrets to unlock your creative energy. So this is all about exploring your erogenous zones. Do you know all the types of female orgasm? Have you explored them? Have you learned your anatomy of arousal? And definitely listen to our episode two with Rachel Grouse, all about all the anatomy of arousal. Um, seek stories, resources, and classes that will allow you to expand and enhance your sexuality. If you answered that you didn't have good sexual education in school and your parents didn't provide it, then there may be things you don't know. Even a lot of people that are having what appears to be really good sex and rate themselves highly are often surprised when they get into that chapter in my book or join me in classes to learn all the techniques and ways that we can feel even more pleasure. The clitoris, for example, is 8,000 nerve endings with no other purpose but pleasure. So there's a lot to explore there. So ask yourselves, how many types of orgasms do you experience? How would you describe sex with your partner early in your relationship? What is different or better now? And talk about that. The S in pleasures, we're coming to the end now. We've really done a lot of work. We've got more education and expanded all our pleasure and erogenous zones. We're now the sexy wild woman and we're time to celebrate the new sexy you. So once you have what I call this pleasures treasure chest and you've taken every step to fully be in your sexy wildness. It's time to celebrate all the work you've done. And this has cleared the way to expand your sexuality and create more intimacy and fun with your partner. So this is where we create a sexy playlist and we really have a good time and can really look what were the steps that were easy, maybe you've done some, where are the gaps, but you've come to this, you've done all the work that you've determined you need, and you're that 10, or uh, maybe you're a 12 off that chart now, and anytime you falter, you now have the treasure, pleasure chest to bring you back. So Sheila Kamara Hay said, yes, yes, yes. By boldly talking about no one, what no one else is talking about, Deborah Pascali Bonaro is offering new moms precisely the support they need to nurture their bodies, to fuel their family and mothering with joy and vibrance. Healing our cultural gaps between birth, parenting, sexuality, and sensuality is precisely the power move required to alchemize the often heavy responsibility of parenthood into a loving and ecstatic experience. Thank you, Sheila. I love that quote. So let me just review those nine pleasures again for you so you can write them all down in order. The P is preparing your roadmap for more fun and sex. The L is losing yourself. The E or endings are new beginnings. A, appreciate your new body. S, sensuality, ignite your senses. U, understanding sex begins between your ears, right? Communication. R, rituals, daily pleasures to change your life. E, energize and expand your sexuality with lots of knowledge and new techniques and stories. And X, S, sexy wild woman. So I hope 
that this has really got you thinking, which one or two of these will you heal or expand next? Incorporating and expanding into pleasures is a lifelong journey. There's always more to do. But I said I had a surprise for you. So if you've listened to here now, you can receive a free chapter of my book that's going to outline all these pleasures by going to orgasmicbirth.com forward slash sex hyphen after hyphen baby hyphen book. Look in the show notes and you'll see that link there. Sex hyphen after hyphen baby hyphen book and orgasmicbirth.com is full of lots of resources for you to engage. So I hope you've really thought about how you will process or heal your birth story expand your vision for parenting, love, and sexuality. How will you love your ever-changing body and enhance your daily pleasures and communicate with love? Gave you lots of things to think about today. And I want to thank you so much for joining me for this podcast. I again, hope you'll follow me on Instagram at orgasmic birth and share your thoughts. What was your favorite quote or what came up from you? I'm collecting more stories for our blog. And if you had an orgasmic birth, or maybe you've, I've really gone a tenor after in your sexuality, after having a baby, I'd love for you to PM me your story and your information. Maybe I'll invite you here to to join me on my podcast too. I'd love to hear for you. And we're also always taking spots for our wait list for our next sex after baby program. Truly an opportunity for a small group of people to join me live for weekly sessions and a lot of resources and extras provided and several amazing guest experts joining us so that you can create the fun, love, intimacy, and best sex of your life. Thank you. Wishing you pleasure.